I'm Marissa Covey and I'm here with Rob Warner for Amazing Profit Media. We're in downtown London in Hotel Russell. Thank you so much for joining us, Rob. No problem at all. Happy to be here. To get started, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, sure. So my background is a bit unusual. I was a numbers guy, I was an accountant for many, many years. I had a great idea to set up a software company, so I left a perfectly good job and salary and cars and all those nice things that you have by being an employee, and I went and got set up a company, which turned out to be a really bad idea and nearly cost me everything I owned. And the result of that in nearly sort of 2010, 2011 was I needed to keep a roof over my head. So we started doing some pay-per-click work for some clients and learning some skills and building up a portfolio, and from there, we turn things around dramatically, and we now have a very successful pay-per-click company that we never planned to have in the first place. I mean, I always say our business was built on core principles of desperation, cowardice, and a lack of better alternatives. That's what got us started. We winged it for the first year, but after that, we've kind of built a plan, and it's worked really well. How did that plan-building strategy go from a failed business? What kind of did you learn to make this one successful? Um, <laughs> interesting point. I was advised years and years ago, if you want to run a business, know your numbers. That's why I trained to be an accountant. I always wanted a business, but I learned to be an accountant so I understood numbers. The better advice might have been, if you don't know how to sell something, you won't have any numbers to count, other than the fact you're losing money every day of the week. So we learned how to actually sell what we do, and we learned that um, the type of sales approach that I'm comfortable with as a not natural salesperson is consulting people, helping people, giving advice. And our single biggest strategies for those first couple of years were simply, if somebody asked a question in Facebook and I could answer it, I answered it. I helped. I was gave advice where I could. If I went to a meeting, I'd never try and sell anything. I would just offer help and advice. And over a period of time, we found that our reputation kind of built. And it was a really, really strange thing because what would happen would sometimes somebody would say, hey, I've got this AdWords question. Anybody know the answer? And I'd answer it. And then the following morning, I wake up, because often it'd be from the US, and I'm obviously here in the UK, um, there'd be a bunch of friend requests and messages going, hey, Rob, can you help me with this? I thought, this is cool. I like this. I can do, I can sell like this, because I offer advice and people then come to me. And that's been the sort of fundamental pillar we've built. Everything we do is about educating, advising, um, providing good quality information, and people come to us so we don't go out and sell. It sounds like you're like building a content strategy and kind of controlling the conversation around your brand? Uh, yes and no. If you actually look at our brand online at Invisible PPC, we don't have them. There's nothing, you don't see anything about us anywhere. I mean, we're a white label service provider. We work with other agencies predominantly. They don't know, they don't want their clients seeing our online presence. Otherwise, it kind of, you know, lifts the veil of being a white label provider. So it's all our networking, all our contact. It all happens in closed groups. So you know, if you look at any of the groups, be it on Facebook or LinkedIn or member communities or wherever we participate, we participate loudly and constructively. And so you're right, it's absolutely content. But publicly, we kind of just stay a little bit under the radar. So do you rely primarily on people advising their friends to go to you and word of mouth? Yeah, it's, it's been word of mouth. We started training. So, so for example, the work we do with Amazing.com and the work that we do with other training programs throughout the world, we publish under our own name. We've done that as a, as a way of reaching out to people, saying, here's the knowledge we have, here's how you can use it to um, grow your business. And so we've started doing that on a sort of chargeable basis, but in terms of um, free content, um, it sort of all lives in these sort of closed environments, if you like, and it, that brings referrals. We have a very strange dynamic going on that within our white label agency, a lot of our agencies are referred to as by other agencies, which you'd think they wouldn't for competition, but they do because people tend not to overlap as much as you might think. With Google AdWords, you said you can't really find your company if you mm. search for it. How does that relationship work with Google AdWords and they seem almost at odds with each other? Yeah, they are. And it's, it's a very strange dynamic, actually. One thing we often say is that you, and it's, it sounds crazy, but you can't sell pay per click marketing using pay per click marketing. And that's a slight oversimplification. You can. There are things that you can do, and there are strategies that we use. Um, but predominantly, if you actually would do a search for a pay-per-click marketing service, you would find two or three big software platforms who are multi-million dollar businesses, 
um, with large budgets and can, and can afford to nurture leads over a long period of time. And they can do that. There's a handful of those kind of guys in that sort of space. Now, given that there's only seven spots on the page for ads, and only four of those are really credible since some recent changes, it's only a handful of people who can play that. For everybody else, including us, we have to get a little bit more creative with it. So our pay-per-click ads are things like remarketing, are things like Gmail ads um, that are not quite so obvious, but provide content. So our, we will run Gmail ads to content, which comes back to us. So it's kind of an indirect strategy. Is that the same kind of strategy that you advise to your clients then? Because I feel like they'd come up with the same problem of if they don't have this big budget and they're not a big company, they're also going to struggle getting on the first Yeah, page. it depends on the type of client they are. So for most clients, we will do a combination of regular search marketing for them, some display marketing, and some Gmail. And that works really, really well for most businesses. There are some businesses that should never advertise on Google AdWords. So for example, if you've got a really small, low margin, low value product, don't do it. It's not going to end well for anybody other than Google who get to keep the money. Because what we have to remember in all of this is no matter how bad your experience, Google gets to keep their money. So we're very brutal and quite, kind of direct with our clients or even our prospective clients. And when they say to us, look, would you run this campaign for us? If we think they're going to have a bad experience, we just say, look, we're not going to do this for you. Please, here are our reasons why. You can choose to go to somebody else if you want. And if they take your money, fine. But it's probably not going to work out very well. And we find that kind of honesty is the best approach because people know that when we say to them, yeah, this will be fine, that it really will be and they'll have a good experience from it. So we find that that gives a much better dynamic for most people. For most local businesses, for most e-com businesses, it's great. But be sensible about it. How can a person identify if their business is one of those businesses that qualifies as when I should do it or I shouldn't do it? That's a great question. Um, Everything's unique, every case is individual, but in terms of guidelines, if you sell a product that, um, you sell, let's say you sell online for example, if you sell a product that 50 other people can sell exactly the same product, let's say a pair of Nike trainers, any number of different businesses can sell those shoes at exactly the same price or cheaper. And a number of those will be big brands like Zappos or Amazon or whoever it might be, you know, you're competing against major players with big reputations, big budgets. So if the, my first test is, can I buy this from 100 different people and my only differentiator is price? If it is, don't do it. Um, if you have something that's slightly unique or unusual or is differentiated in any way or has a higher price point, absolutely go for it. So it's kind of, I almost call it the Amazon test or the eBay test. If you can find a bunch of them on eBay or on Amazon, don't do it. Otherwise, you're good to go. So for a lot of our um, viewers, they are Amazon mm. sellers. So what are some of those differentiating things that you think that they could play up that would make it okay for Google AdWords? Absolutely. So from an ad, if you're an Amazon seller, now your situation's a little bit different. And you can do things slightly different to other people. So first thing is, look at the price point of the product. If it's less than $10, don't advertise it. Um, if it's more than $10, and we can buy cheap clicks for it, because lots of things we can get relatively cheap clicks for it, then our preferred strategy is to do three things. One, always have a landing page. So don't people take people straight to Amazon. Take them to a landing page first. That way you get to remarket to them, you get to capture the lead, and you get to pre-frame that sale. Because obviously Amazon control what you can and can't say on the page. Outside of Amazon, you can say what you like. So you present your product in a much more strong fashion before that person ever sees it in an Amazon environment. So you frame the conversation. You can knock out your competitors' strengths before they've even seen your competitors on the page. So that's the strategy we recommend. Start there. Do things like Google Shop. And that also allows you to do things like Google Shopping ads, which are great because they're really cheap. And we do a really sneaky tactic with Gmail, which um, works really well for Amazon sellers. Super cheap, high converting, and brings in buyers. Can you give us a clue as to what that Gmail one is? Yeah, sure. So it's really simple. Um, Gmail ads are Google-sponsored promotions, as they're rather more grandly titled officially, um, are a very uh, relatively new feature in Google. And you can target people in their Gmail inbox, um, partly on the keywords that they're, so that are of email that they receive. So let's say you sell, I don't know, um, a cooking implement. So let's say you sell a, a blender. Okay. 
So if somebody buys a book from Amazon about juicing recipes, they're probably going to get a blender. So we could target our ads only at people who've received email from Amazon saying, delivery of your recipe book, okay, we'll show them an ad from our blender. So we can show those people at the time they're receiving their delivery of something directly related to what we're buying, we show them our product. And that's super cool. Because we know they're in the market. We know they've just bought the other thing that, that we could that complements our product. Similarly, if we know that they are looking at competitors, we can target their competitors in Gmail. So it's really cool. That is really cool. Is that a new feature you said? It's new. It came out late 2015. Thanks for giving us that little clue, Rob. I'm excited <laughs> to hear more about it at a later time. Yeah, we will do that. That'll be good. Um, you mentioned a little bit earlier about lowering the cost and how you can keep costs cheap with these strategies. Can you talk a little bit about that? Mm. So the key to keeping AdWords costs down is there are two things that matter the most to anybody advertising AdWords. One is making sure you can get more value per visitor to your website than any of your competitors. So one of the key things that makes the biggest difference is do you have an offer that's better than your competitors? or at least different to your competitors. Different is often more important than better because diff people notice differences. It's easy to tell if something's different. It isn't always easy to tell if something's better. So if you can have something that's in terms of make sure you're unique, makes it stand out in a way that your prospects value, that's step number one. So think about it from a business perspective before you even get to AdWords. Think about your business first. Have a great product with a great offer and present it as strongly as you possibly can. Once you've done that, we can then reflect that in the AdWords. So all our keyword targeting, all our ad copy, can reflect and pre-sell that unique position. And that's a phenomenal starting point. Then when we go into AdWords, there's a couple of other things that really matter. Number one, setup is really important. Um, AdWords make it extremely easy to lose little percentages of your spend by, they have lots of little default settings and little little um, options that are hidden away, buried under like four or five mouse clicks that a typical user won't know. And when you, do, when you don't change those settings to, for, away from the defaults that Google give, you waste money. And that might be 2% with this setting, 2% with another. And before you know it, you're 10 or 15% overspending and you've not, you, you wouldn't notice. So first thing is good setup really matters. And once you've got a great setup in place, then it's all about really organized, professional, ongoing management so that you, you think about it properly. You don't just, we often see people kind of have a, I've, oh, I've run this test for three days, I've not got an answer, so I'm gonna kill all that and start again and do something different. You can't approach AdWords in that kind of reactive, um, unplanned way. You need a plan and a strategy that will might run for say three months with, with checkpoints, but run a good strategic plan rather than reactive day to day, oh my goodness, what's, what's happening? And if you do it that way, the results you see can be dramatic. We've seen um, clients, in fact, we're working on one right now, where when we started work with them, they were already running an account. They were at a $90 cost per inquiry. They're profitable, that. They're a successful business. They sell an item that's two or $3,000. $90 an inquiry, they were, they were happy. We're now down at $25 for the same inquiries. And they're getting a lot more of them. So you can imagine the dynamic. That's, that's taken us three months. Um, but in that three months, going from 90 to 25, is business changing. You know, if you can get nearly four times the leads for the same amount of money, then the effect on your business is dramatic, and that's what we're looking for. But that's come about through a plan and a process rather than a <gasps> oh, the world ending kind of reaction to anything. How do you form one of those strategies or that mentality of organizing it out? Oh, we just make it up. <laughs> no, <laughs> we, have a we have a plan. <laughs> so we start off by building some solid foundations, as I said. We start off with a really good setup. And then we methodically work through everything to do with that. So we have a, like a, a schedule. Depending on the size of the campaign, the schedule might be daily in terms of what we do on a daily basis. It might be weekly. It might, on a very small campaign, be a monthly improvement cycle. And it has to be appropriate. There's no point testing something with 20 clicks because that doesn't tell us anything. We know we're looking to test with 100 or 200 or 500. So we have a cycle of testing keywords, of testing ad copy, testing extensions, uh, making sure that our position on the page is important. Position on page, big change recently, super important. Yeah. So it always was, but it's now more important than ever. Um, and that's the way we work, basically work through it. And we'll feed back. Interaction with a client is a great thing because 
from our perspective, we've got great technical knowledge. We know this stuff inside out and upside down. We know our clients' businesses as much as we possibly can, but they always know more. So we can ask the question, because sometimes it isn't just about how many leads are coming in, it's about what the quality of them is. You know, it's not whether we're selling, making 10 sales at $20, we might want five sales at $100. We need to get that feedback and that dynamic, so we, know, we need to know what good looks like, we need to know what the business expectation is, and we work to meet that. If someone wanted to get started with your business, is there anything they need to do to prep beforehand? Um, one really important thing, and it's by far the most important thing for any AdWords campaign, understand what you're looking to achieve. If you know what your goal is, then it's a heck of a lot easier for everybody else to go, yes, we can do that, no, we can't do that, here's a timeline. If you don't have a really good understanding of what your goal is, and I'll give you an example of a conversation we often hear in our business, we'll speak to a business owner and say, what's, what's your goal for your AdWords campaign? I want to sell more. Okay, one more, a hundred more, what, what does good look like? Give me a number that I can fit to good. An ideal answer is I want to sell 50 more per month with an ad budget of $1,000 by a given day. I can work with that. That's a really good target. Sell more, not so much. Specifics, that's where exactly. it is. Exactly. We need to know what good looks like. Then we know if we're doing a good job, we know if we're not doing a good job. And we can feed back and work together. How do you measure what's good for your business? For our business, we're looking for, I guess, a couple of things. We obviously, our, our charges are based on a sort of monthly retainer, so we know what, what that looks like. We're looking for clients who understand and buy into the process. Um, and that means in terms of our level of communication, so we need to know that we've got a plan. We, have a, we don't just you know, pick up the phone every single day to, just for a chat. We want to know we've got a weekly call booked in. Its purpose is to go through this particular aspect of the campaign. We're going to feedback results and get some feedback. So we're looking for people who understand and respect that and who appreciate there is a time and there is a process. And the other thing that works really well for us is business owners who are prepared to listen and understand to what good might look like, what we're doing, and why, why things are the way they are. If we can have intelligent conversations with a business owner who's prepared to listen and prepared to try and improve their own business, um, that's a great thing. You know, our difficult relationships when someone says, no, I'm not gonna change that page, that's the way it is, that's the way it's always been, I'm not changing, I'm not testing it. We'll, go, well it's boring, it's not a very good page, you're not going to sell anything on that page. Well, I'm not changing it. You know, that's difficult, I, we can't fix that. Whereas if a business owner goes, okay, I hear what you're saying, you're the experts, let's work together and come up with something that's good for the business and good for the campaign. And how does search marketing science fit in with that? So search marketing science essentially is a replica of our internal process. So from a business owner's perspective, going into the training for the first time, we've tried to put together our business processes in a way that a business owner can understand and use for themselves. So if you don't want to work with an agency, and lots of business owners don't want to work with an agency, you might be too small, you might not like agencies, and I get that. Um, that course should take you right the way through. So it starts off with some understanding of the business things we've talked about. What does your market look like? What do the competitors look like? How do you fit? Get that bit right, and we've got a really good structured process. In that training, we've broken that whole process down of understanding your market and your competition very carefully, because if you get that right, everything else can fall into place after it. We then go into a really good setup process. We then go into how to write really strong ads based on all that work that we've already done, and it kind of all flows through, and it gives the business owner that cycle of feedback and optimization that I've just described we do as a business that they can do for themselves. And of course, in the course area, there's the, there's the comments in the community, so it isn't an isolated place. If they need help and feedback, we're in there every day. They can ask questions. It's not a problem. It's wonderful that communication and support even... It matters. goes back to what you said when you started, where you just offer the free advice. I'll be there to help you. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Well, thank you so much, Rob. Thanks for your time. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs>